Hi my friend, in this video we're going to be making minimal tech house synths and vocals inspired by Chris Lake and Fisher's song, Somebody. And we're going to find out if we can do this in about one and a half hours of in-studio time using the 80-20 rule of tech house synths and vocals. What you're listening to right now is the track that we'll be working on and what you're looking at right now is the Ableton project file that we'll be working on in this video. In particular, we're going to focus on this melodic group here, going in order of the layers that I actually kind of built things out, as well as this vocal group here, going through the vocals in the order I made it as well. I think going in order as the way that I actually created it is important, so that we can kind of follow through on this kind of workflow when you're building out these tracks yourself. With that said, it did only take me about an hour, maybe an hour and a half of studio time to create these vocals and synths and all that. And if we zoom out and have a look at this entire project file, it's been completely mixed, arranged, mastered, all that stuff, and it's ready to go. And this took me about four, four and a half hours or so of time to completely finish this, which is pretty fast. And if finishing songs faster is something that you'd also like help with, I have created a completely free bundle of templates, samples, and special bonuses that I actually use to completely finish one song just like this every single week. Just visit the link that's in the description or on screen right now to grab your copy of the Ultimate Song Finishing Toolkit for free. And with that said, let's jump into this. All right, all right, all right. So the first layer that I added was this kind of guitar layer. And so what this is, I just kind of looked up some guitar loops in the right key on Splice, found something I liked, and then cut it up quite a bit. So if you look at this, um, instead of just playing all the way through, which sounded something like this. A lot more, um, I guess you would say, like more chord progression kind of thing. So instead I just kind of grabbed the first bits of things and repeated them a bunch of times. And so in terms of any processing, I was kind of going for this with a reference track. So there's definitely a lot more of like that sample of the original tune in there. And that's kind of what I was kind of trying to go for, kind of that guitar kind of sound, but trying to make it my own in the same way. I guess before continuing, I should mention that I do have the reference track in this video or in this Ableton project and set it so when I press the S key, I can flick back and forth and that helps select the right patterns, the right sounds and the right um, volumes. And really the sound selection of the volumes is going to what get you that 80-20. So with that said, jumping into this guitar bit here, other than cutting it up a bunch, I did a little bit of EQ, so removed a bunch of the low end, got rid of a bunch of the high end as well, kind of just making room for the kick and the bass, making things so they're not too muddy, and then moving some of the high end is more of like a sound design choice, trying to nestle things in a little bit. Other than that, I'm running into this one knob side chain, so kind of getting a bit of that pumping effect, again, making room for the kick, um, and then also giving kind of a bit of a groove as well, and then a bit of one knob uh, saturation as well. I usually will throw everything into like these little backs like this, so that way I'm using Shaper to go for that kind of elephant tool kind of shape to a quarter note, which is usually what the kick drum is on, and then just automating the gain kind of, instead of having to route things to a compressor and all that kind of stuff, it's just a lot easier to do things with a one knob, and that's kind of the standard channel strip that I'll use. That way I can quickly mix as I go, doing the common things like removing some of the lows, shaping a little bit of the highs, some transient design, side chain, saturation, and width. Um, if you want access to these plugins or this kind of channel strip, as well as all the samples, there's also an additional link in the description where you can get access to this product file, as well as every product file I'm dropping on a weekly basis, as well as all the previous project files that I've dropped as well. So you can get access to all these cool little, little macros and things that I'm constantly adding and experimenting with. Uh, but with that said, I also want to show you a little bit more of an arrangement trick, but in the beginning half of the tune, um, I've cut up this guitar bit in a slightly different way, so I kind of want to show you what that looks like, or and sounds like. And so it's kind of going for, if we listen to the reference track, boom. 
kind of going for that kind of sound a little bit, uh, but with like a slightly different sound. So basically it's the same kind of loop here, just cut up in a slightly different way. And then next is this other guitar loop here. And so what this is, is I found another guitar loop on Splice and cut it up again. And as you can see here, kind of went for kind of a call and response. So the, the L guitar plays like on the first bit and then that's kind of the call. And then the response is this other guitar little cut up bit here. And so I have the L guitar. The first one I showed you is panned to the left. This one is slightly panned to the right. Uh, kind of cool way to have an interesting stereo effect and then also make things just interesting to listen to because it's kind of sound like things are bouncing back and forth between the left and the right in addition to the call and response, which is a pretty standard kind of cool electronic music and house music technique. In terms of the sound design on this next layer, uh, just removing a bunch of the lows as per usual on this channel strip, a little bit of the one knob side chain, a little bit of the drive, and that's about it on that one. And then the third layer that I added was this kind of swell guitar, so let's have a listen to that right now. So it happens at the end of, of every four bars. Here it comes again. And so essentially what's going on there is, again, I just found a cool little guitar part on, um, on Splice and kind of cut it in there and kind of again going for call and response where first it's the blue one, then the orange one, blue one, orange one, and then at the end add a little bit of extra with that kind of swell guitar sound. Very subtle, um, but it's in there. And in terms of any processing, there's a little bit more some stuff going on here. So we're moving a bunch of the loads, making sure it's not interfering in any way. I'm running it into a sound toys effect track where I'm using the pan man. I think it's on the minor movement setting and adjust the width of it. So it's kind of just kind of moving between the left and the right speaker a little bit, which I think is a fun thing to do. Then running it into the crystallizer on the half sapphires setting. And that adds that kind of like delay trail that sounds kind of mystical and fun. I really like using that kind of granular delay effect on my tunes. So it kind of fills up the sound a little bit as well in a really cool, subtle, interesting way I find. Other than that, then it's running into this one knob sidechain, kind of giving it that bounce and for the kick and a little bit of saturation. And saturation, usually I'm using this to kind of fill out the sound a little bit. And then the next layer is this kind of vocal effect. So let's have a listen to that. It's kind of automated, so it's slowly filtering in. So let's have a listen to that. Still filtering in, still filtering in. So what this is, is when I was building this out, instead of like fully copying kind of like the Gautier, Kimbra, somebody I used to know kind of vocals, I wanted to find something else to make this my own remix or edit or bootleg or whatever you want to call it. And I chose a song called Litany, uh, or an artist called Litany. The song's called Woman Feet Appleby. Uh, I don't know where I found it, saved it at some point, thought the vocals were cool, but they wanted to make a dance version of it. And so I kind of cut the beginning little intro part of that song, has a little vocal bit like this. And so that's what I have here um, in this, what I kind of cut up here and repeated, kind of making that cool vocal transition kind of effect thing. Uh, so that's all it is, just cut it up. Uh, I think I had to do a little bit of warper marking to make sure that it was in time and sounded correct. But other than that, that's really that. In terms of the processing, I'm running it into the shaper box preset here, just kind of, I think I was looking around for stuff under stutter and repeat to kind of give it a little bit more of that stutter effect and kind of like interesting jumping between the left and the right speakers and that kind of interesting sound. And then I just dialed it back with the master a little bit so that a bit of the original sample is coming through as well. Then in terms of the EQ, the standard channel strip, removing a bunch of the lows and then also automating the low pass filter so that it's kind of more of a cool arrangement effect, I would say. Then I'm running it into this portal. Portal's a cool granular effect. So I just found like an interesting kind of sound kind of similar to Crystallizer in a way. Um, and then what I've done is I make my own macro of this. So one thing I like to do is 
common thing that I'll usually do is like, it's cool to use an LFO to adjust some of the parameters. And if I'm adjusting a parameter often like that, then I'll just build out a, like a little rack for it. So I've mapped the mix, the depth and the rate or the mix of the portal effect and then the depth and the rate of an LFO. And if the LFO is automatically mapped to the mix, so I can just quickly adjust this and automatically have kind of that cool movement and sound changing over time effect that an LFO can do. Then just running it into the one dot sidechain, and that is a look at that. Now let's have a look and a listen to the vocals that I added. So pretty cool little vocals here. Um, again, it's that song, Litany. Uh, the artist Litany in the song is called The Woman. And so again, I uh, found the, just the chorus in this. And the way that I found this, as well as that kind of vocal effect that I mentioned previously, uh, I dropped the song from um, from the track. I dropped it into lala.ai, and I used that to separate out the vocals. And that's how I was able to get access to the acapella. And I had to do a little bit of, of like warp marking to kind of make sure things are a little bit on time. It didn't naturally just sound perfect in terms of the timing and then once that was all set up a little bit of the processing that went on here was moving a bunch of the lows as normal a little bit of one off side chain and a little bit of saturation to um kind of fill out the sound a little bit main thing again was just flicking back and forth between this and the reference track to try to get the vocals to sound good so i'll kind of give you a listen of how i usually flick between them so you can kind of get an idea so it's like something like this So I'd say ours maybe sounds a little quieter, but it's pretty close. It doesn't sound like too off, I would say. On that, there's one more little bit that I want to show you. It's this kind of little bit here. So this is a clip of that chorus part, and it's slowly filtering in. So just going back to that real quick, just giving you a look at what I did there for this fading box. Uh, removed a bunch of the lows to normal, and then I have a, one of that, that cool portal effect as well. I found just a different preset, and I just kind of automated in this time um, some of the, the mix of this. So it's like coming in and out and kind of making an interesting sound, I would say. Other than that, I guess another thing with the vocals is I did, I guess as an arrangement bit, this like little beginning, that ah. Uh, I use that in different parts of the tune here, as it's kind of a tease going into the drop. So, yeah, listen. There, and then a little bit later. Just using bits of the vocals in different areas to kind of tease it out as part of kind of the arrangement, which is what we'll get to in the next bit here. Hello again, my friend. Hopefully you found that video useful. If you'd like to follow along yourself with the five step song finishing checklist, there will be a link in the description below where you can get access to that completely for free. And it's going to help you finish your songs a lot faster and better than ever before. If you found this video useful, like and subscribe and all that good stuff, but really the best thing I can do for you is hook you up with that free checklist. So make sure you check that one. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video, my friend. Have a good one.